This video will talk about how to use the web browser's element inspector. Each browser has an inspector that is designed to help you be able to see what's going on in a page. It has some helpful uses. One use of the element inspector is to identify how a page is made up. That is, what are the sections of a page and what sections are within other sections. Another use is to find the source of CSS style attributes. That is, where are these styles coming from? This is especially helpful because CSS has inheritance and overriding, and so sometimes you need to be able to sniff out where some sort of characteristic of formatting is actually coming from. Third, it allows you to try changes to your web page on the fly so you can see if they have the desired effect before you actually update the source code. I'm here on a web page and I want to be able to inspect and see what's going on with that page. I have a couple of options. One is I can actually go to some specific element or I can just go in the page in general and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to select inspect. This brings up the inspector and this gives you a variety of different options. I've undocked mine so that it is, I can kind of like move it around independently. So the first thing I like to do when I'm visiting a page is I want to see what the main pieces of a page are. So in here, for example, we have a container which is sort of like the, the great grandfather. It's the outer container that is, is the entire page. And within it are other things. There's headers and so forth and, and a main body and so forth. So let's use this inspector to get a sense of what the main pit parts of the page are. So first, we, we have a header, which is up here. And that's sort of like the upper part of the page. And then below that, we actually have another area where this series of menus are. Down here, we have the main area. So I'd like to be able to see how far down that main area actually goes. So by scrolling down and coming back and, and mousing on this, I can see that the main area goes down this far. Now within each area, there are usually nested sections. So we have a sidebar, for example. We have the main content area within that section. So by navigating down through this page, I'm able to look at the divs and sort of see which sections are within what other sections and that's really helpful. Now when I click on a given section down here in the styles area I can see where these characteristics are or what these characteristics are and where they come from. So I'm going to make this bigger now so you can get a better feeling for what's going on down here. Within here I can see that where these styles came from. The background color, which is sort of like this dark blackish color, has been set right here. And then I also, for this overall section, we have padding that's actually padding uh, this. And if I turn these on and off, I can see that we have padding at the top. Uh, we can also turn this background on and off. And so in this particular web page, what we have is we have a background image that looks like these curtains. And then this is being overwritten by this kind of darkish gray or, or light black features. And by being able to turn them off, I'm able to see what effect that has on the web page. That's really nice. And I can also see that this feature is set in line 713 of the style sheet called style.css. You can also use the element inspector to be able to go find out what the source of formatting is in a way that can help you find and solve problems. So for example, in, in this web page, I have three sort of like parent headings and I wanted to have them all be non-italicized and I wanted them to be bold. And if you look up here, this one is bold and italic. So I'd like to be able to go use the inspector to help me figure out what the problem is. So by clicking on this and then selecting inspect element, the inspector takes me over to where this is in the web page, and I'm getting a clue right here. Right here, the class that I'm using is bold. If I look down here, this bold style is actually just applying a bold font weight, but I'm also inheriting in the italics 
from line item. So essentially what's happening is this is a line item that is inheriting in from my CSS style for line item, the italic. That's why that's italic. And then I've also brought in and put in the bold so that that is actually being called in, this bold characteristic. If I look down here to what is working right and click down here and inspect that element, then what's happening is I have basically used a different self-defined style here called resume list heading that is both normal, non-italic, and is also bold. And this is overriding this style. And one of the nice things about this is that you can actually go make this change right in the document and see if it fixes everything. So I'm going to copy this and go up here and I'm going to change this so that instead of bold, I'm going to put in resume list heading and it changes it and that fixed my problem. Now this has not been changed in the source document. To make that change, I'm going to need to go over to the source document and do that. But what I was able to do with the inspector very quickly is to find out where the source of the problem was, make a quick change and see if it fixes it. And then after I've done that, I need to go back to the source code and change that there. Now you'll notice that this little bulleted item right here is different. Most of these are italicized and not bold. So just one more example. So let's look at how we go through a process of inheritance and overriding to be able to get this particular style, which is both underlined and italicized and bold. At the parent level, what we did is we applied resume list heading and resume list heading was both normal, which is non-italics, and bold. But closer down to the item, we have line item, and then line item uh, basically switched it back to italic and switched it back to normal. But then, once I added in the underline and bold attributes, which are here and here, then that overrode the normal. So now we're bringing in italic from this style and adding to it underline and bold from these styles and so we have everything that we want.